watching the world's reaction to everything going on has got me trying not to think about certain things. I'm honestly quite tempted to ask myself the question, is this all a dry run for what we have been promised is coming eventually? It's amazing to watch. The authorities tell the public that there will be no more public masses, and without a peep, most of the public obeys. Think about that for a moment. Yes, I know, the situation out there is very real and very dangerous, and I'm not denying that. Nor am I denying that it is a good idea to limit public gatherings to curb the exponential growth that is expected of this thing. While I'm not terribly worried about myself or my family, my immediate family, my wife and my children right now on for this, I do legitimately worry about my older neighbors, about the older nuns who come to my parish, and of course about the older members of this audience because all of you are in the risk group who are most likely to be affected by this thing. It is a legitimate concern of mine, and you are all in my prayers nightly. But it is also a legitimate concern to stop and really take stock of everything that has gone on. At the time I write this, the governor of my state hasn't issued curfews or gathering bans on public events, at least not yet. As I understand it, he's probably one of the most libertarian governors in the country, And so, at least on this issue, that makes him more likely to defend the public saying of the Mass and letting it continue. But then again, who really knows if that'll change or not. But taking a good hard look at the compliance to the secular authorities is worth looking into right now because, as you probably by now have seen, a week ago I released my We Were Warned video on the prophecy surrounding the suppression of the Mass and how the biggest danger to the Church is going to be going along with secular authorities. Yes, even that part was prophesied by approved mystics of the church, not by some random person claiming to be a seer online today, but by those that the church has put under heavy scrutiny in the past. Do I have a story for you today on this? Yes, it's a short one. It's one of those stories that, again, all things considered, makes sense but still requires us to take pause. And after that, I have some things that you can do while you're, you know, not able to go to Mass. Headline. Italy. Police shoo away people outside a church hearing Mass through the open doors, by Father Z. Yes, it comes from Father Z's blog, and he's a good source. Father Z quotes this segment of an Italian news story, quote, Police disperse Catholics at Sunday Mass in Italy. Italian police on Sunday dispersed Catholics attending a Mass being celebrated in a parish outside of Rome. The Mass was being offered at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in the Italian town of Certaverte, some 27 miles northwest of Rome. Earlier this month, the Italian Bishops' Conference confirmed government measures against public gatherings, effectively prohibiting the public celebration of Mass anywhere in the country. Some 15 people were present at the March 15 Mass, some of them seated outside of the church, whose doors were opened as Mass was offered. The Mass was being live-streamed on Facebook, Police entered the church after the distribution of Holy Communion and before the final prayers of the Mass. The priest was permitted to conclude the Mass after per- parishioners dispersed. End quote. So the police interrupted the Mass itself to disperse the faithful from worship. At least they had the good sense to wait until the Eucharist was given to the faithful for what that's worth. This happened this last Sunday, and yes, I get it. Italy looks like something out of a bad Hollywood horror science fiction film right now. What surprises me about this story is that we don't have any more like it out there that I've found. There just aren't more stories of priests permitting private masses to be turned effectively public, and the authorities bringing the hammer down on them for doing so. So many of us are going along with the public authorities on this with few questions being asked, because we have at least partially bought the idea that's straight out of the lodge, that we must subordinate the church to the state, that secular authorities have greater authority over our lives than the church does. Even the authorities in the church have clearly bought into this wicked idea, as the treatment of Cardinal Zen and his flock can attest. It's difficult at this time to know what is truly right. Most of the bishops who speak in defense of the real Catholic faith in these times of spiritual crisis have yet to issue a public statement, save for Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano. He spoke in a letter about how suppressing the Mass at the request of the secular authorities was wrong. I have the text of that for you in Tuesday's video, so go watch it if you haven't. It's easy to find. He questions, as do I, the willingness of the faithful and the hierarchy to just go along. Yes, seeing various priests and bishops, including Francis, take to the streets to pray at historic Roman churches and, in some cases, to process in the streets 
with the Blessed Sacrament, as you're seeing on your screen now, if you haven't watched this on YouTube or BitChute, is all very helpful. And the public signs that we need from the leadership of the Church that the faith is what can save us, but without access to the Mass, and especially without access to confession, that becomes a much harder prospect. Some priests are permitting one or two people to attend their private Masses, and are presumably saying many private Masses each day. I saw a picture of this from Clear Creek Abbey in Oklahoma, and at the time of the production of this video, Oklahoma hadn't suppressed the public Mass yet. So, some priests are taking fruitful action that skirts with rejecting the imposed authority of the secular rulers, and that, to me, is a good sign. The sacraments are priceless and should not be restricted from the public for any reason. If you see a letter from one of the typical cardinals or bishops on this topic, from you know, the ones I usually cover, please send it to me. I'll be happy to read it and record it for the audience. Whether this is a dry run by some scheming antichrist type doesn't really matter, to be honest. The enemy, that fallen one, is certainly cackling with glee. Fewer members of the faithful receiving the graces from the sacraments is always good news for his efforts. We shouldn't lose sight of that. Even if it's necessary in these times by those with the power to make such decisions, our adversary is quite happy with the result. Fewer people going to Mass. Fewer people accessing confession. And yes, the isolation of faithful older population with even more limited access to the sacraments is something that must please our enemy immensely. This especially when considering that habits form by keeping a practice up for at least a month. What's that have to do with anything? Well, because with the dispensing of the requirement to attend Mass, there are some who will joyfully not go, and will have the seeds sown for their not returning to regular Mass attendance after the crisis passes. That's a very real threat, but there is one remedy for that. Taking this time to proactively make our forest Lent mean something. By now, virtually every bishop in the Western world has formally dispensed with a Sunday Mass obligation, and instead recommends that the faithful make an act of spiritual communion. For us as believers in what the Church says must come, this is a dry run for us, for those times when the authorities don't use a real crisis to suppress the Mass, but instead just do so out of malice and spite at the behest of the Antichrist. Whether that happens in our lifetimes, or in the lifetimes of our grandchildren, or some far distant point in the future, is aside. The bishops recommend that we make an act of spiritual communion, and I'd bet that most of us don't know how to do it. First, you must be in a state of grace to make an actual act of spiritual communion. Second, there is an article on LifeSite on how to do that, so go look for it. It's If you're watching this within the first two or three days of the video going live, you'll be e it'll be easy to find. Now, again, you have to be in a state of, spirit, an act, a state of grace to make a spiritual communion. Most people aren't aware of this, and don't take my word for it, though. Archbishop Gadecki is one of the strident critics of Amoris Laetitia, and he said back in 2016 about making an act of spiritual communion, quote, The divorced and remarried cannot make spiritual communion. Archbishop Stanislaw Gadecki, president of the Polish Episcopal Conference, affirmed in an intervention at the convention what God joined together, marriage, family, and sexuality, in the context of the Synod of Bishops 2014-2015 which took place on April 14th at the Cardinal Stefan Wazinski University in Warsaw. Archbishop Gadecki, who stood out during the Synod of Bishops in 2014 for his defense of Catholic morality, wanted to respond to those, such as Cardinal Casper, who sustained that if the divorced and remarried can receive spiritual communion, they can also receive the sacrament. The use that is made of the term spiritual communion in order to justify the admittance of the divorced and remarried to the sacraments is absolutely improper, explained Archbishop Gadecki. Spiritual communion refers, in fact, to people in a state of grace, who on account of physical impediment cannot receive communion, as happened, for example, in the part of Poland occupied by the Soviets after the Second World War. On the contrary, it cannot refer to those who are forbidden to receive the Eucharist on account of a moral impediment they can freely remove, by, abandon by abandoning the situation of sin that they are in. All those who are in a state of God's grace can make a spiritual communion. Those who are in a state of sin can pray, attend Mass, develop the relationship with God, but this relationship cannot be defined as spiritual communion. End quote. There's a prayer that goes along with this that's on the LifeSite article. You should go look at it. The statement, though, is backed up by virtually every faithful Catholic source I double-checked it against. So get to confession. I literally don't care if you your only option at this point is to go to the SSPX chapel that you've been against going to. Even if I disagree with the stance that many take that they're an evil, wicked, schismatic group, and they're definitely not that in the slightest, 
All priests can, under extraordinary circumstances, provide confession and extreme unction. We live in such extraordinary circumstances today, so please go to confession at the very least. Many priests are dr doing drive through confessions in parking lots right now, so if you see that weird practice, go. It's still a valid sacrament. For now, it looks as if masses pretty much everywhere are suspended until either Easter Sunday or even later. Please keep all those who are seeking to enter the church this coming Easter in your prayers, and pray that they have the strength to persevere through this crisis. The Catholic faith is the greatest gift anyone can receive, and it does take an active participation in the conversion process of the convert to embrace it. Their perseverance in these times is essential. For them, they can be counted lucky that this lockdown happened in March, mere weeks before the Easter Vigil Mass, so their entry shouldn't be denied when the time comes that Masses can be said again. No formal announcement has been made by the bishops on what the catechumens and candidates will do when this ban is lifted, but I'll report on it when that time comes. But am I wrong in thinking that, at least to some degree, this might be a dry run? There are plenty who think that the Antichrist is alive and among us today, that he just hasn't made himself publicly known yet. Well, I don't know if that's true. If he is among us now, he must be taking notes. After all, it is a matter of faith that we must believe as Catholics that there will be a man of sin, and that he will ban the Mass and the sacraments entirely, with the sacraments being only available from underground priests who offer them as outlaws in the dystopian nightmare that is to come. That is a matter of faith that we're required to believe, and I'll cover that in a future We Were Warned video in April 10th, in April most likely. But am I wrong to think that this is at least being noted by those who hate us? There are definitely people in positions of authority who would deny us access to the Mass and sacraments as a matter of law if they had the power to do so. Surely they must be enjoying this. The members of various schismatic sects who deny the, the, the Eucharist and are laughing at, the, at Catholics for not having access to the Most Holy Sacrament of the Altar right now attest to that. But let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, please. I'd like to see what you have to say. And please, again, get to confession, get in a state of grace, and make an act of spiritual communion at least once each week on Sunday. You can do it every day. And use this time wisely for your spiritual growth. Thank you for listening and for your support of this channel. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.